Hey everybody! Welcome to the MTC Report. We do lots of innovative, cutting-edge journalism and some music too. Mama, she done told me, Mama done told me to. Oh, that girl you're hanging with, well, she ain't no good for you. That's all right. That's all right. That's all right now, Mama. Any way that you want to do. Yes, everybody, uh, May 3rd was World Press Freedom Day. So this is what yours truly has been working on for most of the last uh, two months, actually, but especially the last week, not getting much sleep and for major conferences, one at the UN and other places, uh, one in Washington, D.C. Uh, it was the 30th anniversary of World Press Freedom Day as designated by Reporters Without Borders. So. Journalists from all over the world were gathering to talk about press freedom, and believe me, in most of the world, being a journalist is not an easy thing. It's not e it's not easy in the United States either. The United States is now ranked, get this folks, 45th in the world in terms of press freedom by Reporters Without Borders. They announced this, uh, these rankings of the World Press Freedom Index for 2023 during that event with uh, Anthony Blinken, U.S. Secretary of State's keynote uh, speaker. And yes, the United States has and yes, the United States has dropped once again. We've had a steady decline since 2002 when we were ranked 17th in the world in terms of press freedom. Now we're ranked 45th. Last year we were ranked 42nd, so we've dropped three places. And we can talk a little bit about some of the reasons for that. I'm writing about that at uh, Truth Out right now, so that article should be out this weekend or by Monday. Uh, also, I wrote a piece at Daily Coast on this and at Democracy Watch News, of course where I'm executive director. So press freedom is a major issue for me. I am editor for Press Freedom at Democracy Watch News, which means it's my job to keep an eye on it, especially in the United States. Since I am in the United States, I'm a US journalist. But I am not proud as a US journalist that our country is um, ranking, that our ranking on the World Press Freedom Index keeps dropping every year and has gone back down to 45th now after being at 42nd. So I am just uh, so frustrated that no corporate mainstream media is going to report on this. Not even any public media, really, or community media, or uh, what have you, have talked about this. So maybe somebody's low power FM radio station in the middle of the night that nobody hears. But other than that, uh, the mainstream media is not talking about this. It's one of the most censored stories in the country, probably of the decade. And uh, only a few members of Congress seem to care anything about it. And as I just told Jeff Santos on his show, I'm on the Jeff Santos show, uh, usually every Friday, but once a week um, at jeffsantosshow.net. And uh, that's live streamed on YouTube and Facebook and Twitch TV and all over the place, including radio stations and other platforms. So kudos to Jeff and the crew for doing such a great job getting great people like Professor Harvey J.K., the historian. He's written multiple books on uh, FDR. He's also written about Tom Paine, Thomas Paine. Um, and they also have Professor Shelton, who is a professor of democracy studies. So John Nichols from The Nation, the writer from The Nation magazine, he's often a guest on there. They have great regulars like my... Uh, friend Herb Boyd. <laughs> Herb, I love you, guy, man. <laughs> You're so great on the Jeff Santos show. He is the uh, the writer and editor at uh, New Amsterdam News there in New York City. Uh, great writer. He also wrote a book called uh, Black Detroit, A History of Detroit, so that's a great read. Um, so anyway, Jeff Santos show once a week. I also do reports for the Tom Harbin show, but what I'm talking about, what I've been talking about is press freedom during these guest appearances and in other media and that's what I've been writing about and uh, broadcasting about and also doing videos about. It's really important to me that people start to wake up and realize that we have a problem with press freedom in this country. A lot of it has to do with media monopolies 
and the fact that you have uh, a handful of networks that own you know hundreds of TV and radio stations around the country so one corporation owns you know hundreds and hundreds iHeart Media by the way owns 855 radio stations just so everybody knows that uh, and then um, Cumulus has I think 404 this is this is according to their own websites too nobody's making this up um, so you know that's radio but television is the same you have a handful of large corporations who own hundreds of stations around the country uh, the FCC was uh, designed and commissioned to regulate the public quote public airwaves unquote but they are no longer public airwaves they are now private airwaves that are available to the highest bidder um, recently I worked with a group called Progressive Radio Northwest they wanted to start a new radio station in Seattle to replace all of the progressive media that's been taken off the air including those great voices you know that we used to hear back in the day like Nicole Sam Sandler and Sam Cedar and Ron Reagan Jr. even yes Ronald Reagan's uh, son Ron Reagan Jr. is actually quite liberal uh, there were also other great people like Randy Rhodes was on there and you know Tom Hartman and you know uh, Norman Goldman uh, Robert Kennedy Jr. they all on the Ring of Fire with Mike Papantonio they had lots of great programming on this network called Air America and also on Nova where the Mike Malloy show was but they all got taken off the air after Obama got elected and Clear Channel sold off or bought up excuse me 855 stations um, CBS and other networks turned a lot of stations to sports and got rid of talk shows and political dialogue so um, the diversity of opinion uh, is pretty narrow here in the United States although people tend to think that we have great uh, laws about freedom of speech you know the First Amendment and freedom of the press uh, actually there's a pretty narrow political spectrum compared to say Europe or other places where people uh, have more diverse political views because they have more uh, media that allows for that uh, and the the whistleblower uh, I know there's a lot of very strong opinions about Julian Assange on all sides uh, but let's just try to keep in mind that whistleblowers are an important part of what makes journalism tick that's why things like a national shield law would be very helpful to reporters to keep them from being prosecuted or harassed from re for refusing to reveal their confidential sources or you know because that's how things get leaked in the public interest is a not you know sources that don't want to be revealed they're they're there as whistleblowers for that reason so I just uh, wanted to let people know that yes there was a protest um, at the World Press Freedom Index uh, release party sort of uh, but there was no party there was just bad news basically seven journalists have been killed already in uh, 2023 563 media workers and journalists are currently detained or in prison around the world so there's been a real turn towards authoritarianism if you look at the charts uh, it definitely shows that since uh, say 2013 um, there's been a huge swing towards authoritarian regimes in the world trying to crack down on the media or eliminate any kind of independent media so and it goes without saying that there's a lot of state controlled media around the world that just voices the interests of the government and also censors and keeps other voices out in the United States it's more self censorship for instance nobody's reporting about the fact that we're ranked 45th in the world on the World Press Freedom Index and that story broke uh, two days ago right so uh, people should know about this the New York Times should be reporting it but they're not uh, Medea ben Benjamin did break through the media silence of course by having a protest uh, she was treated pretty roughly by I think that was Secret Service too the way that they physically grabbed her and and just pulled her off the stage like with a big way that they physically grabbed her and and just pulled her off the stage like with a big jerk like that uh, 
Anthony Blinken actually stood up and said, you know, take it easy, you guys. He didn't want her to be injured, and he was kind of concerned. With Curious whether you've uh, been able to talk. Excuse us, we can't use this day without calling for the freedom of Julian Assange. The Biden... The extradition request what about two hours and not one word take it easy take it easy take it easy guys not one word about journalist Shireen Abdul Akhli who was murdered so so uh, however many major US corporate media outlets did not report on it at all you'd think it would be a big story I don't think that you know Anthony Blinken has his speeches uh, interrupted very often it you know I think that is a news story um, but, you know, that's part of what I was talking about. In any case, I want to thank everybody who's been supporting my channel and listening to these uh, reports on press freedom in the United States. It's, it's an important issue. As a journalist, of course, I'm all about freedom of expression and freedom of the press because I'm also an artist and a musician. So both go hand in hand to me in a healthy, creative democracy. Um, I did get to hear Irene Khan who's the head rapporteur for freedom of expression uh, for the United Nations at that event in New York City uh, on World Press Freedom Day, May 3rd, at the UN headquarters, where she spoke during, in the chambers for the, where the General Assembly meets about uh, press freedom. And she criticized the United States, which I think is, is smart, and India for being two so-called democracies, unquote, that actually have a lot of problems with press freedom. And it, you know, in India, they tend to be pretty direct. In the United States, they're more subtle because they're behind the scenes. They're decisions that are made by corporations, not necessarily by people uh, in government. They're made by people in business suits, not, you know, not politicos. So there you have it. Uh, that's the state of uh, press freedom. Uh, the United States is now ranked 45th in the world in terms of press freedom by Reporters Without Borders on their World Press Freedom Index for 2023. I'm not proud of that. I've been lobbying every major uh, media and news network I can in the United States to report on this stuff, but they're not doing it. So I guess we all just have to keep up the struggle and um, like the people who are uh, my video is dedicated to called Mother Freedom. Uh, at YouTube, if you want to check out my music video, there you go. That's my my rock music. Um, like those people, we all have to dedicate ourselves to continuing the struggle for press freedom around the world, and not uh, settle for any less, and not allow authoritarians to shut voices out that are critical of their regimes. This is Mark Taylor Canfield in Seattle for the MPC report. Uh, please subscribe to my channel, click that button down there, and like it, and share this and spread the word and you can also follow me on all the other major social media like twitter and facebook and instagram and all of that this is mark taylor canfield in seattle saying peace out y'all